The magic wand tool can be such a helpful tool, but you have to know how it works in order to get the most out of it. In this quick tip, I'll share with you how the tolerance setting of the magic wand tool works and how you can adjust it to make easy selections. The magic wand tool is a selection tool. It allows you to make one-click selections, but that one-click selection can give you different results depending on the tolerance setting. According to Adobe, the tolerance you set determines the color range of selected pixels, and that tolerance range can be set to any number between 0 and 255. A low number will select fewer colors. A large number will select more colors. But let's look and see how that actually works. So here in Photoshop Elements, I've opened a paper from the All for Fall kit by April Lisa Designs. This pattern's a little small, so I'm going to press Control plus in Windows or Command plus on a Mac a couple of times just to zoom in a little bit. Then I'm going to get the magic wand tool and we're going to play around with the tolerance setting to see if we can better understand how it works. So in the tool options, I'll click on the new selection icon. I'm going to set the tolerance to 32 because that's the default setting when you first open this tool for the first time. And then I'll uncheck sample all layers and contiguous. If you're using Photoshop, make sure to set the sample size to point sample. Now let's say that I wanted to select every pixel on this background paper that is light yellow, not this medium yellow, but this light yellow. So I'm going to click once inside any of these light yellow areas and see what it does. Now that does a pretty okay job. I wouldn't say it's great because it is picking up quite a few pixels in the medium yellow area and a few pixels in this peachy area. So if we want to try to hone in on that light yellow color by itself, we need to lower the tolerance. According to Adobe, the lower the number, the fewer colors that's selected. So I'm going to deselect by pressing Control or Command D, and then I'm going to change the tolerance down to 20 and see what that gives us. So I'll try again here. And that did a pretty good job. There's still a few stray pixels being picked up in the medium yellow range, but it's so minor now at this point, you'd hardly be able to tell. That's, I would call this an acceptable selection. So now I'll deselect. But let's say we wanted to try to select all of the yellow pixels on this paper, both the light yellow and the medium yellow. Let's try increasing the tolerance just to see what happens. So I'll set the tolerance to 60 and see what that gives us. I'll click on one of these light yellow areas. And as you can see, it's picking up a lot more than yellow. We're getting a lot of orange and we're getting all of the peachy shades as well as this like gray tannish beige flower here as well. The reason it's picking up so many more colors is because our tolerance is high. So we would have to mess around with the tolerance number to try to zero in on just those yellow colors, which is sometimes difficult to do because so many of these colors are in the same color family. One workaround you could try if you wanted to get both the light yellow and the medium yellow colors is to lower the tolerance back down to 20 or maybe even something like 15, depending on what you're doing. And we'll first click on the light yellow areas, and then we'll change our setting for the tool from new selection icon to add to selection icon. And then we'll try clicking on the medium yellow with the same tolerance of 20. And there, that did a much better job. Now, all of the pixels on the paper that are selected are only yellow and nothing else. So sometimes you have to play around with how you want to make the selection process work. And if you understand how tolerance works, you can make it work a lot better for yourself. Let me just deselect now. So let me just show you a quick like real life example of how you can use this to maybe recolor a paper or recolor something else. In this case, I've decided that I want to select the blue shades on the paper, but individually or one at a time so that I can recolor the blue shades to green in order to match the cluster that I'm going to have on the card that 
I'm making with this paper. So to do that in the tool options, I'll click back on the new selection icon. I'll keep the tolerance set to 20 and I'll keep all the other settings the same. Then I'm going to click on the darker blue color once to get a selection outline of those colors. And from there, I can then recolor those pixels green. And that worked really well. So now let's see if I can use the same tool settings to recolor the lighter blue shades to a lighter shade of green. And that worked really great to select all of the light blue colors on this paper. And that worked really well too. So as you can see, now my paper has all of the blue pixels recolored to a shade of green and I'm really happy with the results. So to recap, the tolerance of the magic wand tool will determine how many colors will be included in the selection. A lower number will give you fewer colors and a larger number will give you more colors. So that's how I used the tolerance of the magic wand tool to recolor this paper. I love how my simple card turned out. The color change wasn't massive, but I wanted to have some shades of green to go with the greenery I used in the cluster. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like and consider subscribing to our channel. This has been Jennifer Jers with Digital Scrapper. We help you get your stories told.